as the Latino moviegoing audience grows in the U.S., are they ready for their first prestige pick? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Cesar Chavez. To be successful, we have to have an army of boycotters willing to do the hard work. The bigger the army, the bigger the success. Farm workers in Delano, California have begun an unprecedented strike in the Central Valley. The citizens of Delano, they respect the law. So do we, especially the Bill of Rights. Have you seen the headlines they're getting? That's costing us real money, Mr. Bogdanovich. We don't have to negotiate. We have to dictate terms. Caesar, they will shoot. We're gonna break this damn strike. You know, as a prestige pick, Cesar Chavez is off to a pretty good start, with the audience at South by Southwest having just awarded it the Narrative Spotlight Award. And that was its North American premiere, having been first screened at the Berlin Film Festival just a few weeks earlier. And while Hollywood has already recognized Gandhi, Oscar Schindler, Norma Rae, and most recently Solomon Northup, why not now Cesar Chavez? Especially as the Latino movie-going audience heats up the box office with not just the Fast and Furious franchise, but also Eugenio Derbez's Instructions Not Included, which hit theaters last summer and became the highest-grossing Spanish-language film in the United States ever. In fact, Derbez just signed with top Hollywood talent agency CAA. Speaking of Latino talent, Derbez's fellow Mexican star Diego Luna directs here. And while this is only Luna's second time directing a narrative feature, the first was Abel back in 2010, Luna is certainly no stranger to the festival circuit or the award circuit. Abel won the Ariel Award, the Mexican Oscar, for Best Original Screenplay and was nominated for Best Director and Best Picture. Plus, Luna has co-starred in Critical Darlings Before Night Falls, Y Tu Mama Tambien, Frida and Milk. So he knows the game and has the connections, as does his co-producer and frequent co-star Gail Garcia Bernal. And this is also good timing for their star, Michael Peña. Peña surprised Hollywood when he brought in the Latino demographic for 2012's End of Watch, which resulted in a surprisingly strong number one debut for the low-budget pick. Could the role of Chavez, plus roles in the upcoming Fury opposite Brad Pitt and Marvel's Ant-Man, finally make Peña an A-lister after two decades on screen? Plus, Chavez is a great American story, and still timely even today. Not just because he led the original Latino labor movement in the 1960s and 70s, but his slogan, Si Se Puede, would later become Yes We Can, and co-opted for another groundbreaking campaign. This is a great and important story, but unfortunately, Cesar Chavez plays like an HBO movie. And I think that filmmakers need to accept the fact uh, that as TV steps up its game, it's imperative that they do the same. Because as I said, this is a great and important story, and Cesar Chavez gets that across, but unfortunately it just isn't cinematic enough, I think, to warrant a trip to the theater. And so I think a lot of people aren't going to go see this in theaters, which I think has, you know, uh, a domino effect of, you know, Hollywood feeling there's not an audience for this kind of story, et cetera, et cetera. And there should be, because for two reasons, both, with, uh, both something that's important to the Latino population and also everyone in general. Now, as for the Latino population, I think it's really great, as I said, to have a kind of prestige pick uh, for this demographic uh, and to visit one of the, their important historical figures. Not just in the Latino, um, uh, you know, demographic, but also in, um, in America. I think so often when we talk about the history of America, it's whitewashed. It's as if history refuses to accept that we've always been a very diverse nation. So I really like that very slowly but surely Hollywood is you know, highlighting these stories showing that in the 1950s and 60s we had a very large Latino population uh, in California and also a very large Asian population. Uh, I mean, when you, it's very much there are shades uh, of the grapes of wrath here. And I think that's a very important part of the American quilt. Uh, and so I, I respect a movie like this uh, for, you know, showing the truth of what America uh, has been, where it's come from, and that things aren't quite as different as, uh, uh, you know, some of the more um, right-wing uh, groups would have you feel. Not to be political, but, uh, and also I think, you know, that's not fair, because I think the left-wing groups haven't highlighted this either. I think that everyone is responsible for not making it more clear as to how much we've always been a diverse country. So that's one of the things I liked about that from the Latino perspective. But also, Cesar Chavez is a movie I think that's important for everyone to see because in addition to highlighting the struggle of um, you know, the, the farm worker, it also talks about the importance of not letting yourself be a victim, which I think applies to everyone. And also that sometimes you need to stand up for something that's right, stand up for justice, even if the odds seem insurmountable and, you know, they're going to really put a kink in your life. I mean, what Cesar Chavez has to sacrifice in both his personal and, you know, 
professional life is really uh, staggering. And to see that unfold in this, what he did, uh, I think, points out what an American hero he is. Uh, so as I said, really well told, told story, but just not cinematic enough. Uh, the acting is even good. I think Michael Pena is quite good, American Ferreira, John Malkovich, who's also an executive producer here. They all do a really good job. But I think that just like I don't think people are going to see this movie in theaters, I think their work will go largely unrecognized uh, unless this thing runs a stellar uh, uh, awards campaign. I was going to say ad campaign. Uh, it needs to run one of those as well. But unless this movie is really on the ball in terms of promotion, both within the industry and out, I think it's just going to slip through the cracks. Because again, as I said, simply not cinematic enough. And when, as I think back more, I think that was really what helped 12 Years a Slave, besides its subject matter, uh, obviously, but the fact that it was so cinematic. I think that really helped give it that extra push that separated it from its competitors, you know, the other movies of 2013 that dealt with uh, race relations. Uh, so but also, the other thing I want to mention about John Malkovich, he's very good in this movie, uh, not only as an actor, but I like the way his character was depicted. I think this movie did a remarkable job of portraying uh, how the powers that be can be so cold, but also nonchalant. You know, they're not like this evil villain twirling their mustache. They're very matter-of-fact and scary in that matter-of-factness. So I think, again, this is an important movie to see. I really think everyone should see it. But even I have to admit, you don't need to see it in a movie theater. So that's my review of Cesar Chavez. If you've seen the movie, I hope you'll leave your own thoughts about it down below. And you can check out some more episodes right now.